I grew up in Spokane, Washington. I was born in Seattle, and we moved to Yakima and then Spokane. When I was a junior in high school, my mother, who had an affinity for the Navy, helped me join the reserve on a program that was before the Vietnam War. So they deferred me all the way through college. And then I went to seminary in Princeton and they sent me orders. They wouldn't defer me any further. And so I immediately looked up where I could join as an officer. I found a place in Southern New Jersey and they accepted me into the Aviation Officer Candidate School in Pensacola as a pilot, but I knew they were gonna catch my eyes. So I researched the programs available and found a naval flight program. Pilots went to learn how to fly, and I went to school to run the radar and navigation. So then at the end of that school, they ranked us according to our academic standing, and then gave us a choice of what airplanes were available at that point. I had done some research and found out the A3 was available. So I decided to take that, because I wanted to fly off carriers. Twin engine jets, the heaviest airplane to operate on a carrier. We had to land at almost minimum gas because we were so heavy. We selected the airplane and we went into training. They don't do this anymore. Celestial navigation. But we had a section on the top of the airplane that we used to shoot the stars and the sun. One of the first times I got in the cockpit, just as I was sat down, there was a loud explosion. The pilot knew what it was and he went into a dive because he had to get down for oxygen. And all of a sudden, we were right above Mount Rainier. The mountain's getting bigger and bigger. I thought we were gonna crash. <laughs> Turns out it was a door, a safety door on the door over the hatch where we got in the airplane that it popped off. And we lost our interior atmosphere. But they fixed the problem. We got back, all got back in and flew. And we went to uh, San Diego to uh, go on the Kitty Hawk. The ship went out to Yankee Station, and then the ship would go back and forth off the coast of Vietnam. So we'd fly out to that, and then land, and then do our missions when the ship was on duty. The A-3 was reconfigured from a nuclear bomber of the 50s, and we were losing aircraft in North Vietnam to SAM missiles. So he did an analysis of the SAM missile site and found that they could jam the target acquisition radar. So if you could jam that radar, they couldn't operate the missile. We would monitor the radar environment while the airplanes were in the country. And if we saw a spike that was a SAM missile, then we would jam it. So we, we were sitting offshore while the airplane is inshore, and we were looking on our radars monitoring the path of the airplane. We also had a tanker package in the back. We could trail a hose and the airplanes would come up and plug into the hose. We were poised offshore. If anybody got shot up, needed gas, we could give them gas. When we came back out of Vietnam, we were assigned to the John F. Kennedy to go back to Vietnam. And we went to uh, the Caribbean to do carrier qualifications. And while we were there, the PLO attacked the country of Jordan and was about to take their capital. So they sent us over to the Mediterranean to cover the king. And I was scheduled to get out of the Navy while we were there, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to come home. So I re-upped for a couple of years and then came home and taught in the training command at Brunswick, Georgia. I was six years in reserves and then six years active duty, so about 12 years. I, I never intended to make a career out of the Navy. I was a short-timer. 
flying was okay, but it was like a job to me. It was neat and fun, but I, when it was over, it was gone. I never wanted to fly again. <laughs>